Hello, um, so this is your first studio art project. Uh, it is going to be a collage and I'm going to start by showing you guys artists who make collages um, or who use collage in their work. And then um, I will give you a um, run up down of the materials you need. And then we will see a demo of me making a collage just to kind of help give you an idea of what to do. Um, so first of all, we're going to talk about artists who have made uh, collages in their work. Uh, this is Hannah Hocht. She was a German artist. Um, she was a Dadaist. She was alive from 1889 to 1978. Um, she uh, was known for her uh, politic, like politically charged collages. And um, she was also kind of the pioneer of the photo montage. So um, that is where you take photographs and you cut them up and, and glue them together and reassemble them in ways that create a new image or a new meaning. So this is her piece cut with the kitchen knife through the last Weimar Bear Belly cultural epoch in Germany. A piece she is famous for. Um, so as a Dada, she was part of the artist a group of artists, uh, mostly men, who responded to World War I. Um, and after seeing those atrocities, they felt that, you know, the world was sort of nonsensical. And so even their name echoes that ideology, the Dada. Um, so as part of the Dada, so it was a very male group. And um, being the only female in it, or uh, the only well-known female in it, she um, made a lot of work that critiqued uh, politics and culture, but also critiqued um, women, you know, the way male men or with the way society constructed roles of women. Her work is, um, like most artists, is pretty sort of fun or funny or kind of wacky, um, and that is. Uh, reflective of that idea that, that things are sort of nonsensical or crazy, um, that war is crazy, that this sort of, you know, trying to make sense or trying to not make sense of things and therefore uh, making artwork that reflects that feeling. She noted that there is no, there are no limits to the materials available for pictorial collages. Above all, they can be found in photography, but also in writing and printed matter even in waste products. And that's something to keep in mind um, as you uh, as we go through this presentation, because you will be using waste products to make um, like things like flyers, newspapers, magazines, things like that, that you can find um, to make your piece. The next artist is Robert Rauschenberg. This is Buffalo too, a piece he's very famous for. Um, and Robert Rauschenberg was uh, alive from 1925 until 2008. His early works anticipated the pop art movement. So he was hanging out with people like Andy Warhol. And if you look at that picture of John F. Kennedy, um, I'm pretty sure that's a silk screen. And that was something that Warhol was using a lot in his work too. And silk screen was very popular because it was this art for the masses. It was this way to reproduce materials very quickly. And so then Rauschenberg took that idea and started layering other materials on top and collaging with, um, with his silk screens. His approach was also called, sometimes called neo Dadaist, um, which was a uh, sort of a label he shared with Jasper John. So it's also that kind of nonsensical um, kind of goofy or weird or the juxtaposition of things that are, um, that create kind of this odd questioning. Um, and he incorporated not only found objects, um, but also found images. Um, so a lot of times he would actually have objects in his work, things like full blankets and kind of whole large objects that were attached to the canvas. Um, but he also went around and collected um, objects too to do that. Rauschenberg picked up trash and found objects that interested him in New York, um, which is where he lived and he lived and he brought them back to a studio where they could become integrated in his work. He claimed he wanted something other than what I could make myself, and I wanted to use the surprises and the collectiveness and the generosity of finding surprises. And if it wasn't a surprise at first, by the time I got through with it, it was. So the object itself was changed by its context and therefore became a new thing. 
So basically he, he, you know, used the sort of entire city as his, his source material, finding things, collecting things, um, that he found notable and then creating artwork with it to, um, to create something new. Uh, so the next artist, Njedeka Hakaneli Crosby, um, I'm going to show you a video of her um, talking about her work, and then I'll show you some work. For me and in my practice, I'm really trying to figure out how I can take this way of painting that I've inherited. It's a very Western figurative type of painting and figure out what I can do to it and how I can change it and how new things can happen to it. I was born in Eastern Nigeria. After I left, I moved to the United States for undergrad. I went back to Nigeria, did a one year service to the country. And something about being out for a while and going back lets you see things with fresh eyes. And I really became aware of how multifaceted the space was, the country and how its convoluted history had led to this very exciting um, new transcultural space. And that really was the moment I, I, I had a clear idea of what I wanted to make my work address. Okay, so here is some of the work that she uh, was talking about in that video. Um, she does large scale works of paper. So these are very large, um, as you saw. Uh, she combines a collage, drawing, painting, and printmaking, fusing African and American influences in creative traditions. So she collects images from all, um, you know, from home, from, um, from where she grew up in Nigeria and then takes them and uses um, a photo transfer process to apply them all to the surface. You also saw, saw those some images where she um, applied um, what I know as Dutch wax cloth. I think she calls it visqua um, or viscose. Um, she applies viscose to the surface um, of some of the canvases too. Now this is some of her older work, um, but she, uh, she uses collage in really interesting ways where she combines collage with, um, this traditional, you know, more tr traditional Western sort of painting forms as she mentioned in that video. Um, and her work is often considered in sort of this this uh, sort of class or canon of West Coast assemblage artists. So there's artists um, such as Noah Purfoy, who has this beautiful um, assemblage out in uh, Joshua Tree Desert, or John Outerbridge, or Betsy Saar, who is known for like sort of quilt like um, assemblages and, and, and pieces. And here you can see she even kind of just drew right over. So you can see sometimes it's a, a not a, it's an opaque surface over the collages. And then in this one, there's a really great example of it coming through the clothing. So uh, our next artist, Brenna Youngblood, um, I am going to show you a video of her talking about her artwork. She actually was the recipient um, of the Gwendolyn Knight Jacob Lawrence Prize winner um, in Seattle. So here we see um, her. So Jen Brenna Youngblood was born in 1979. She lives in Los Angeles. Um, and she does photo-based collage, painting, assemblage, and um, her work explores African-American identity and representation. So she uses her own archive of photographic images and details. So, so, you know, as you saw her talking about, she had this, you know, picture of a shoe or this painting hanging on her wall for a long time. And then she came across this picture of a shoe that she had made before and realized that they belonged together. 
Um, One of the things that I think is interesting about this work too is if you have a pile of magazines, let's say that you have all your sports person, you have all sports illustrated, you can actually combine a collage of like things. And I thought that was really beautiful in her work where she had um, all of these chairs put together. Um, and it made me think about like just that repetition and, and rather than collecting sort of randomly, um, which is also an excellent way to go, but to really specifically seek out the same image and see how many times you can find her the same thing and create something that has a repetition in it. So the materials that you um, need are first, you need a good surface to work on, uh, not your nicest table, not your bed, go find a nice um, solid surface, but that's something that it's easy to wipe down when you're done. Put a piece of paper down. That can be an old paper bag, um, just some scrap paper, newspaper if you got it, something to protect that table because you're going to get glue all over the place. And then you want to, on the right, you're going to see stuff that was in your kit and in the center. So one of those square pieces of paper, not the paper that's rolled up, but just one of those rectangular sheets of paper. Um, the colored pencils, which are actually watercolor pencils. The little container of glue, your container may be of a different size, but it's the only little clear plastic jar in the bag, and that is white glue, good old-fashioned Elmer's glue. Two tubes of gouache, which is just a very thick watercolor, and that Conte crayon. You can see in the picture mine is broken. Uh, it still works. Um, and then a container of water and uh, both brushes, the foam brush and the Sumi brush. You may incorporate tape into your work. It's absolutely fine. You may also, and it's not pictured in here, but you may use a glue stick um, and also a scissors. I tear a lot of my collages, but you can um, feel free to use the scissors to do yours. All right, so now we are going to watch a video of me doing it. I'm gonna talk you, oh, sorry. Um, nope. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> there we go. All right. So, um, I'm just getting my stuff set up. Um, uh, once again, you want a piece of paper on the table. We've got the glue, um, and the glue, the, so the sponge brush is actually what you're going to use for the glue and that water there is to both help you thin, um, the materials and, um, or to thin the glue down. And what I forgot to mention is you're also gonna go around your house and collect magazines, papers, stickers, anything that's flat that you can collage with. Um, please ask for permission if it's something that you don't own. You know, ask your parents before you tear up any of their magazines or make sure that they've read the paper before you tear it up. Um, it can also be really, you know, if you don't get the newspaper and you don't get magazines, um, you probably have scraps of junk mail that you can use, um, or old school papers, things like that. Um, really anything will work for this. Um, and what you're going to do is, as you've seen, I've just spread glue over the back of this piece of paper using my foam brush. Um, and I use a little bit of water, not a ton. I don't want to get the glue super thin or super, um, wet, but it does help me to spread things out. And so you can either tear or cut in this example right here, I am cutting out a shape. Um, I actually like to tear, as I said, more often than not. Um, and I'm trying to demonstrate the glue stick, but the glue stick I had, because I rarely use them, it was completely dried up, hard as a rock. So you will not see me demonstrate the glue stick. If you use a glue stick, hopefully you know how to use it. And I should add, I know a lot of you have taken our courses before and you already know how to collage and you already probably even have ideas that deviate from this. That is welcome. Like, please feel free if you want to use a different kind of paper, if you want to collage in a completely different way, as long as you are utilizing sort of scraps and ephemera from around your home, something that's a record that makes it a record of, you know, this place and this time, that is absolutely okay. Um, the goal at the end of the end of this week is to have a collage that represents the space you're in right now. So um, please don't feel pressured to collage exactly like this. Um, okay, so now I'm putting more glue on. If you have a glue stick, it's not going to hold up to some of the heavier papers. Um, so the technique that you're seeing where I just um, put the brush and the glue 
and spread it over something. Also, this is a very messy technique. As you can see, I'm already getting glue on me and sticking to things, and that's okay. We're going to actually do another technique over the top of this collage, so um, please don't worry about getting glue on it. Um, also, the glue will make the paper wrinkle a little bit. Elmer's is a water-based glue, and so it tends to make paper, you know, some of that water leaches into the paper and makes it wrinkled. In this particular project, I'm embracing that as just a texture. Um, I have a background as a fiber arts teacher, or fiber art, fiber artist, and so I do, um, I like texture. And so that kind of wrinkly glue stuff I actually think is, is pretty great. Um, so I'm going to continue to um, build up the surface. Um, you're going to see a second example too that's pretty different. And this one, it's more kind of an all over collage, a little bit more like Rauschenberg's where I'm covering the whole surface from corner to corner um, with uh, different materials that I've found in my, this is particularly in my um, sort of recycling that's left over from my um, junk mail or things like that's not for my junk mail but that's that's the outer envelope that you don't need <laughs> so um and just even thinking funnily like about like i'm gonna be eating you know it's a good chance i might be eating a lot of soup i have a lot of cans of soup soup is going to be in my near life so that's actually like a soup calendar so thinking a little bit about the materials that i put into this and, and what they're going to mean say like a month or a year from now when i look back at this so in a minute, don't worry, in a minute I'm going to unleash my superpower, which is being able to do this in um, fast motion. And um, just to speed it up so that we can get to the next part. Um, but yeah, I'm going to keep layering it um, on top of each other, um, cutting it to size so it fits within the piece. Or I can go outside of the edges and cut it later on. Um, and I'm excited to see me get to the map. That's one of my favorite things to collage with. But if you notice, this is why. Now, if you don't have scrap paper, which would be hard to believe, but if you don't have any scrap paper, remember you've gotten more, you've got about four sheets of that paper in your bag. So you can use another one to do the glue on top if you need to. Oh, there's one of my lists about all the media that teachers can use to, um, make videos and connect with you guys. So very relevant to right now. And that is actually a tripod for my cell phone so that I can make videos of me making art. Also, when you go through the garbage to get your materials, if you wind up going needing to go through the garbage, please remember to wash your hands afterwards. Um, safety first. So this part's kind of funny because I stuck it down. And then I decided that I wanted uh, to put something else there. So in a minute, after sticky, after all that work, I'm going to wind up pulling that back off the paper, which is fine. Like it, this is all about experimentation and trying. And I mainly, I want you to learn the materials that you're working with learn how to work with paper effectively, glue effectively, and also then later on we're going to go back on with some of the other materials we have in that bag. So there I am pulling it off and saying like, oh, so now in this part, um, I, instead of putting it on the back of the object, I just put glue straight on the paper um, because I know I want to cover that whole corner with the map. And Melmer's glue dries fairly clear. It might leave a little bit of a film, but that's okay. Um, and so, there I am, just kind of reshaping it. So that's another way you can do it, is you can apply glue directly to the surface, the backing. Um, I don't recommend cutting it right away, because the glue is going to be wet, and it's going to be messy, and you'll ruin your scissors. So don't use my example there. Wait till it dries, then cut it down. And now I can put that object back.
You can also use stickers. I um, This is a sticker from a film festival I ran a couple years back. Um, and it just makes for... Actually, that was last year's sticker. Sorry. Um, and yeah, and so feel free to apply that too. Um, stickers kind of have a really amazing shiny surface. The stuff that we are... Um, using on top might not stick to it so well, but this, but that's okay. As long as your whole entire surface, if your whole entire surface is stickers, then you're going to need a lot of Sharpies because nothing else is going to stick to it. And we are going to do a surface treatment on top. All right. Sorry. I thought I had done fast forward on this section, which I believe I have on the other section. So, um, it's all right. You guys will get to really see this technique in detail if you haven't already um, done. I believe this is, it might be that you have to do a surface over top, but I believe maybe impro incorrectly, hopefully correctly, that this is also called decoupage. It's a fran fancy way of saying gluing a bunch of pieces of paper on top of each other, which collage is a pretty fancy word too. And then this piece is really thick cardboard. So once again, think about using the white glue for thicker things, not, um, not the glue stick. All right. And I will let it dry and then cut it. <laughs> Even though in this video, I'm doing the opposite. <laughs> All right, there it is. Um, so now I'm going to show you another form, which is if you want to cut out shapes, you know, maybe you want something that's a little more geometric. Um, you can cut out circles. You can even do a better job. I just quickly cut out sort of circles, but you can cut out, let's say you cut out a bunch of circles or a bunch of stars or even a combination, a triangle and a circle and a star. Um, you can be more geometric than I was being um, in the other one. You can also cover less of the surface um, so that you have some of the paper showing through in places. You don't have to completely wallpaper the whole surface. So here I am um, just gluing these circles down and I'm doing so selectively kind of um, diagonally across the page. And this will go a little bit quicker because I've already cut out the circles to show you. There we go. There's my superpower. I guess I forgot to apply it to the first one or something happened. Um, yeah, so now you can watch me do this really fast. If only this was like real life and I could do that. Um, but yeah, so now I'm putting these circles, you know, I'm just using repetition of shape. Um, and I am selectively doing only a part of the page which is absolutely fine. Some other things that you saw that, that you could employ is using like Hannah Hocht, um took different things, you know, took one face and a different mouth and a different body um, to create something new and kind of fantastical. Uh, you can um, draw a drawing on top of your pieces, um, just, uh, just like um, in Jadeka. You can um, use just tons of, as we were talking before, repetition of photographs, like repetition of photographs, like Brianna Youngblood. So now I'm using tape. So that's another, you know, feel free to introduce um, materials. You can even use the tape to hold down some stuff. Don't use little tape rolls um, to hold your pieces down. That'll just look tacky. But using tape on top of it as a surface um, will actually um, give you a nice place to draw. So now I have my two completed and dried um, collages and I'm going to work on top of them to try to get them um, to, to use materials to both highlight different parts of the collage and draw them together, bring them together. Um, and this can be really rough and 
it, it doesn't need to, um, the, it could basically, it, what I'm saying is it can be very experimental. So like right now I'm just writing letters on top of it um, that I will paint over later on. Um, I'm just writing, I forget, I can't read what it says. And I, it, I believe it's just something like sculpture class, or this is my collage piece in March 13th or something to that nature. Um, there again is the Conte crayon. It's in the little baggie that you guys have. Um, these make really beautiful colors. Um, they're not cheap, which is why you guys each only have one. My apologies. Um, but they're nice and hard and they allow you to cover things over. But you know, if you have, um, even just, if you have a little brother or sister or you just have crayons around or you have mark markers, feel free to bring any of those materials into this project. You don't have to just stick with what I have provided for you. But what I'm doing is I'm just kind of going around the, the sticker there to, to make it pop out. Um, and then just trying to, you know, ignore the fact that one object starts in one place and then, and then begins in another or highlighting that fact, um, using these different materials to, um, to go over and, and kind of create a new surface that binds them all together. So if they all have say scribbles on top, or some watercolor pencil or just sort of disparate colors, it will bind it together as a new piece and kind of um, take away from the fact that these are all these little pieces of paper from different sources and different places. And that water is just to kind of make the, the watercolor. When you use those watercolor pencils, you still get a hard line, but if you use it, so now I'm using the baggie for the gouache, just kind of going in and there's my superpower again. I love watching this happen super fast. It's very satisfying. Um, but yeah, you can just use the um, gouache and play around with it. I'm just using it to, oh, there's the Sharpie I brought in. Um, yeah, so all of the materials I want you to experiment with in different ways. And there's no right or no wrong way. Um, it's just um, in an effort to create something new out of something old. I uh, was about to put it off screen and then remembered that you guys needed to see it for a second. Although I should have flipped it around so you could have seen it from the right side. Um, and so here I am going over the tape. I used to actually love to do this in high school. I love to draw over tape uh, because especially with graphite, it, especially in, in scotch tape, there's this really beautiful, it just picks up the material and the lines so well. Um, but here I am coloring in different areas, just sort of seeing what happens when now I'm seeing what happens when I color over a wet area with the color pencils. And then I'm using the side of the crayon like a rubbing. Um, and notice actually from it, see I squeezed that out. It was to then it would absorb up that dot that I didn't want. Now I'm putting orange over blue. Um, many of you guys know those are complementary colors and they make each other pop or they also combine to make brown. Um, yeah, so I'm just filling things in, just painting over and experimenting to make something totally different. All right. So um, your collage project is due with photo with a do um, with a photo uploaded to the website. So you're going to take a photo of your collage. You're going to upload it to our website by Friday, March 15th. And if you're in block three, that needs to be up by 10 a.m. And if you're in block seven, it needs to be up by 1.40 p.m. Um, and there will be other instructions for uploading to the website. You can look for those on Schoology. All right, good luck. I'm excited to see what you have and don't hesitate to send me um, emailed questions and don't forget to check in on your class day um, for uh, attendance. All right, hope you're doing well and I look forward to seeing what you create.